Greetings, cool kid! In this video, we're going to look at how you can use the vernier calipers and things like that. First off, I have one with me, so why not let's take a look at that. Here is one vernier caliper unboxed. Okay, so this is how it works. You open it, you put something in, like a lock or whatever it is you want to measure, then you close it and you lock it. Now the hard part is not doing this. The hard part is trying to read this stuff because it's not your average ruler. So you have to figure out how on earth are you going to read this. Okay, first let's look at the anatomy of this vernier calipers. So this is how it looks like roughly. You have the jaws to measure the insides of stuff. For example, let me see if I have an example. Yes, I do. Ah, let's say here's an example. Let's say you want to measure the inside of this round thing and you're like oh no how to measure inside nah you can use the jaws these ones just put the inside and ta-da you can measure the inner diameter of stuff pretty neat okay and back to the anatomy so we have the jaws we have the screw clamp to lock it vernier scale and the main scale the main scale is like your average ruler law you just how you measure ruler you better know how to use a ruler okay Okay, this is like your ruler. But the interesting thing is this part, the veneer scale. Where did the veneer scale come out, came from? Wow, the person who invented this is very good. So this is how or what is the veneer scale. Let's get this out of the way first. If you look at just this part, can the camera focus? Let's try and see. Yes, it can. This is just the part of a ruler. Now, if you look at one smallest division here, if only we can zoom into it, how nice would that be? For example, if I have my reading something like this. Okay, let's see if we can see that. You see where the zero is pointing at? Is this 2.1 or 2.2 or somewhere in between? Looks like somewhere in between. Okay, I'll grab a red pen. See, here. We are somewhere in between these two places. If I push it over a bit, even more. Okay. So what this vernier scale is, this beautiful thing here it is, it takes, it looks at this small division and it zooms in. It cuts this one division into so many divisions. So you think and see lah, huh? This one is 0 0.1 cm. Here you have 50 divisions for our MCKL scale, extra sensitive. How you know 50 leh? Go and count one by one. Lo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, no need to count. La, okay. So 50 divisions is all this. So what is one of this thing? One millimeter is this whole thing. From 0 to 0. So one tiny division here is 0 0.02 millimeter. Like what we talk at here, right? You see, vernier scale, if one millimeter in the whole thing is this whole thing, cut into 50 divisions, which is division must be 0 0.02. So this is MCKL's vernier caliper. It's extra sensitive. But how do you read it? Okay, first step, you want to read your main scale. Okay, so you see where the zero is pointing at. Let's say this is 1.5 something. It could be 1.6, it could be 1.5, it's somewhere in between. Okay, we don't know. So that's step one. This thing, somewhere here. Step two, okay, you know it's 1.5. Then you do your vernier scale. Now this is kind of the part where, where you have like, have, you have to have good eyesight, lah, okay. You need to see where the vernier scale aligns with the top. Means you look at these lines one by one. They say, hmm, this one kind of aligns with the top. The top aligns with the bottom. So that would be our reading. Eight. Six and nine here kind of align. Parallax error, you see here got a problem already. It could be this. It could be this. Hmm, this one is a bit off. Six is nah. So it could be eight, seven or nine. There's an uncertainty there. Okay. And you're asking me, Miss, how about all the small, small ones in between? You need to check, ah, like all these ones. 
Yes, you could check those, but you don't need to because MCKL scale is a bit extra. You can you can choose to ignore the smaller divisions in between. Okay, because then this would be 8.1, 8.2, 8.4, 8.6, 8.9. Too much, too much. It's going to have a, a precision that is equal to the micrometer. So I guess 7, 8, 9 could work. I'm going to choose 8 because it's in the middle. So let's go with 8. So what does this 8 mean? 8 is 0 0.8 millimeter. Because we have 1 millimeter chopped up into, um, I guess you could call it 10 sections. Lah. 1 section, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We are not using the small division because MCKL scales are extra, a bit more precise, very extra. So 0 0.8 mm and 1.5 of the main scale. So what you do is, you take 1.5, add the vernier scale down there, which one align with the top. And that's your reading ideal. Okay. And let's try an example here. Okay, let me see if I can get some funny thing. I have here a wheel. A toy wheel. So if I want to measure, let's say, the diameter, I keep it first. Oh, wait, I should tell you. You should check for zero error first. Usually labs, lab, lab instruments should not have zero error unless someone really spoil it already. How you check? You close it all the way. Then you look very closely at the zero. Come on, camera, focus. You can do this. You check, is zero aligned with zero? Is it aligned? It looks aligned. Acceptable. Okay, no zero error. If it's a bit like this, oh, means you have a positive zero error. You need to minus off the extra. See, the bottom scale is a bit above than the, the top. Okay, then you need to see oh, where it aligned with the top. You need to minus off the zero error. We'll see more about zero error in the micrometer, but just so you know, check, la, check your vernier. Vernier skill usually are okay. Okay, check for zero error first. Write down the zero error in your lab notebook because you can minus off the values later. So first you keep your tire, lock it so that your readings are locked, then you know the tire can fall off, that's fine. Ooh, this is very this one ah, is very good to measure around stuff. Now we get that, then we read the ruler, the ruler part, the main scale. I like this camera, I can zoom in so close. So we have to see, okay, this is, where is the zero pointing at? 3.9. Looks like it. Okay, 3.9. Then you do the challenging part and look at the vernier scale. Where is it pointing at? Now I can't really see because the camera is blocking my view, but I'm going to make a guess that it is around, somewhere around here. Maybe I might choose 4. How about that? Okay, so we have 3.9 here, the 0. 3.94. Oh, now, now parallax error off already. Okay, 94 lah. Okay, long, so this reading is, the diameter of this wheel is 3.94. How certain am I about this? Pretty certain. Because this is a quite uniform lah. You can rotate it in all directions. Oh, it's a bit tighter now. Okay, so when you're measuring this in lab, if it's something more squishy, Best to measure the diameter in multiple directions. Diameter, then you rotate it, diameter, then you rotate it, diameter. Okay, for example, like this um, Starbucks, no, secret recipe cup, soft plastic, right? So, you measure diameter, rotate it, diameter, rotate it, diameter. Then if you have a few measurements, you can do your average and then for uncertainty, you can do half the range of all your measurements. So that's one way to do it. Unless your uncertainty is zero, then don't do that. Okay, so what is the uncertainty of your vernier calipers? Well, the minimum uncertainty of the instrument is related to the smallest division. So the smallest division in this case, although the, the, the tiny line, can I see this tiny line? This tiny line, the smallest division is 0 0.02. Okay, like what we look at just now. The smallest division of your thing is 0 0.02, but, 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 we didn't look at the small, small one, or we only look at the big numbers, right? Right? So that means 
Your Swans division is actually this. What is this? This is our small division because we ignore the smaller ones because MCKL vernier very extra. So what is this thing eh? 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. Then what? One millimeter ah? Is that our smallest division? Nah. It is 0 0.02 times how many box? How many? I think there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 5. Oh my eyes. So that's 0 0.1 millimeter so i will recommend you use this one as your uh, uncertainty not the 0 0.02 because we didn't read all the small small ones we only look at the numbers down in the vernier scale so 0 0.1 millimeter is your smallest division in your vernier calipers but when you're doing experiments in lab especially when you're measuring things your instrument got an uncertainty of 0 0.1 but then, if your instrument is like a bit odd shape, ah, maybe times two lah, estimate something bigger. Okay, this is only for physics. Don't, don't compare with chemistry orders. Chemistry orders are it's fixed one, but this one maybe use something bigger. So I would probably, this is the instrument, uh, uncertainty la, Okay la. But your experiment uncertainty when you're measuring the diameter, for example, maybe times two. Okay, either times two or times five la, maximum. Somewhere in between. So estimate a bit bigger. Okay? Because you have, you know, parallax error when you're reading the vernier caliper, all this kind of problem. Okay? So use a bit more to make sure you get what you need. Now comes the part. Why ignore the smaller division of MCKL scale? A lot of people ask this. Why our, M our MCKL must ignore? Okay. Because uh, if you look on the left side, this picture, this is how normal vernier calipers look like. If you see in textbook, if you see in past year, they look like this. Our MCKL one is the one on the bottom, down here. Do you see the difference between both? Okay, the words on the right side, never mind. I'm going to explain that. Okay, you see here, one of these is cut up into one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten divisions. That is um, 0 0.1 cm cut up into 10 divisions. But then uh, our one 0 0.1 cm is cut up into, I will go and count, never mind, I, I count already, 50 divisions. So it's more precise. So we really don't need that. Lah. So that's why we just take this, which is the same as this. Okay, our MCQ one, do like this. Very extra. No need, lah. okay, lah. no need. Lah. So that's the whole idea lah. You, you can ignore for MCKL scales. You can ignore the in-betweens. If you really want to take the middle, the small ones, I have to ignore it lah. Okay? So that's why we can ignore that part. Final thing before I end the video is how do you deal with odd shapes? Such as, if I say, okay, we measure the diameter already. Now you want to measure the thickness. So thickness is this thing. So how ah? You say, oh, can get up like that lah. Sure, but the thickness is not uniform. Maybe if I, if I uh, get it a little bit to the side, then it's a bit different already. Maybe if I measure my diameter here in the middle, it's a bit different. Maybe if I measure in this side, it's a bit different. So what you can do is, you just measure at multiple places, okay, from the side to the middle to the, you know, if it's supposed to measure the thickness. And then you take an average. From there, you have some uncertainty. Uh, okay, so make sure you always uncertain estimate your uncertainty more than your smallest division. This is only for physics. Okay, so that's all on the vernier calipers. Hopefully that was helpful in getting you to understand how you can do reading. Go and practice some reading. When you do labs, make sure to ask, check with friends how to measure stuff. But that is all for our vernier calipers.